Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and today we're talking about the landmark edition of Xenophon's Anabasis. So this is my third landmark edition that I've read. Uh, I'd previously read Herodotus and Thucydides, and I read this as part of Historathon 2023, a year-long reading initiative where we are celebrating nonfiction history. Uh, in the first quarter of Historathon, the details of which will be below, we are looking at prehistory up to 500 CE, and this one, a 4th century BCE text, certainly fits in with that. Um, so I read this with one of my co-hosts, of the uh, Historathon event, Mark over at Book Time with Elvis, and also with a subscriber slash, um, you know, commenter, uh, <laughs> uh, Stephanie. Uh, we, we, the three of us read this together, and uh, we had, I think, a pretty great time with this. We are next going to be reading uh, Xenophon's Hellenica. Uh, we're going to do that for pretty much the month of March for the event. Um, and from what I understand, Hellenica is not as engaging as Anabasis is. But luckily, I am, you know, I am happy at least that this was as entertaining as it turned out to be. So Xenophon was an Athenian, and he was basically a mercenary soldier who went with uh, Cyrus, who was the brother of the uh, emperor of Persia, and he claims that the Greeks didn't really know Cyrus's real intentions, but uh, I think we can suspect that sort of claim. And uh, basically, Cyrus leads them all the way to Babylon uh, to try and take the, th the throne from his brother. But Cyrus dies, uh, leaving the 10,000 or so, you know, more or less, uh, Greeks stranded uh, many, many, many miles from home. And they basically have to fight their way back uh, to safety. And what an awesome premise for a fictional story, of course, though this is nonfiction. Uh, Xenophon was in this. Uh, he, he was one of the members, and he's recounting this about 30 years later. Um, now, he doesn't really appear until a little ways into the book, when, and this is going to be like spoilers here, um, this is a, a very ancient work, uh, when their Spartan leader ends up uh, basically being captured and killed. And people like Xenophon and some others have to rise up as leaders to try and get these Greeks out of there. And the whole time they're being harried and harassed, and they're going through strange lands and meeting strange people, um, going through mountain passes, and some of these guys are, you know, dying, uh, freezing up in the mountains. Uh, it, it's it's great. It's kind of part travelogue, um, part military expedition, and I had a great time with this, especially the whole journey to where the, the Greeks are really trying to get to the Black Sea. Um, and after they get to the Black Sea, again, this is minor spoiler, it, it, it does lose some, the story does lose some of its momentum, um, because they're not, they're not in immediate danger nearly as much. Uh, but I have to say, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, Xenophon is interesting. Uh, he's clearly, you know, he's the hero of his own story. Uh, we can certainly be suspicious of the veracity of some things that he says. Uh, we certainly get the indication he's trying to clear his name in many ways. He did, uh, he did end up getting banished from Athens, uh, probably for his role as being a cavalry member during a time when a tyr basically tyrants were in control of Athens and the cavalry was their, their strong arm, um, keeping people in check. Uh, but it might have been that towards the end of his life, that banishment was revoked. So he might have actually returned towards the end of his life. But he's certainly, you know, kind of giving his side of the story uh, of what happened. And he makes himself uh, quite quite the, the do-good hero in this. Um, he was a pupil, I guess you could say, of Socrates. And a lot of it, a lot of this is, you can, you can see this um, playing out his his Socratic teachings uh, being played out in more of a military sense. There are many times when there's debates going on and trying to figure out what do we do. Um, and Xenophon, of course, is the uh, you know the voice of reason, which generally wins out. Um, but that's okay. Uh, you know, this is all still great fun. I, I really like this. And this landmark edition is excellent, I thought. Um, they always are really good, but this one I thought was particularly superb compared to even the other ones. Uh, it has a really good essay right in the very beginning um, that's around 30 pages long or so by Shane Brennan. Uh, and this was this did a terrific job giving context to all of this. And I'm pretty sure Shane Brennan, he talks about how he actually traveled the lands that the Greeks took. 
um, saw a lot of stuff firsthand. So there are actually, you know, very helpful images in here as well of landscapes. I'm just seeing that as I'm flicking through if I can find one. Um, now that I said it, I'm probably not going to be able to find it. Uh, well, maybe I'll find one eventually, but of course, because it's the, uh, the Landmark Edition, you have great maps to help you out. You have footnotes, which I love that. The footnotes are great, and they're not end notes. You don't have to keep flipping around. And also in the margins, you have summaries of the sections to let you know uh, pretty much what what's happening there. It helps you find information again later on when you're looking for it. Um, a lot of the footnotes were very, very helpful to me. Um, and yeah, here we go. We also have photos of artifacts to help you along and you can see that photos of uh, the actual landscapes. So you get a sense of the terrain and the type of environments that these guys went through. Um, and yeah, I, I just had a terrific time with this. I really liked it. Um, I was highly impressed. And this led us down some other rabbit holes, actually, which were kind of interesting. Uh, Stephanie, she had mentioned how, as we were talking about this, and, you know, these Greeks trying to fight their way back through hostile lands, she, she said, oh, it kind of reminded her of the movie The Warriors, back from uh, 1978. And, uh, you know, we kind of laughed a little bit, and I thought, you know, I haven't seen that movie in years. I used to love that movie as a kid. I'd see it on TV, but it probably been 20 years since I had seen it. So I you know, do what most people do. I started Googling it. And I saw in there that in the beginning of that movie, you know, getting at least some minor spoilers, I guess, also for uh, for the Warriors, but that's a pretty old movie. Uh, there, the, All the gangs in New York are basically brought together by this one guy who has this vision uh, for their future, like what they could really achieve. And the guy's name was Cyrus. And I thought, oh, that's weird. That's a weird coincidence. You know, the the Persian leader that they're following is named Cyrus, and this guy's name is Cyrus. Like, that's odd. So is there anything to that? And looking into it, come to find out that the movie is based on a novel, The Warriors, uh, which is based on Xenophon's Anabasis. Uh, so we thought, oh, that's such a weird, goofy, pop culture sort of a reference, you know, a interpretation. So we decided to do a watch party of it, and we did that actually yesterday. I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so it was... Uh, Monday afternoon, and uh, we did a watch party through Voxer and played it, and we had a great time with it, uh, picking out all the different Greek references. Um, you can kind of see parts of Anabasis there, the parallels, uh, not just Anabasis, like parts like the the Iliad um, or the Odyssey, especially. There are all these Greek references throughout it, and uh, we had a great time with the movie. The movie is not an Oscar, not Oscar contender at all, uh, but it is a huge amount of fun. Uh, it's um, actually really well filmed. Uh, the cinematography is great. Um, they got a really nice distinct group of actors with this. Uh, and it's kind of like a, a kid's comic book version of what like you would think gangs in New York would be like. <laughs> it's, it's not meant to represent reality. Um, it's kind of this alternate weird fantasy world that we're almost living in. Uh, and the gangs have these eccentric uniforms. Some of them look ridiculous. You can tell they were grasping at straws to try and get these, um, these gangs to all, you know, have their own look and, uh, then stand out. Um, some of them are kind of creepy. There's actually one called the Furies, um, which again, that's another Greek reference. Uh, they're basically, they look like baseball players with like glam rock makeup on, but there were, I always found them eerie as a kid. Uh, but there's all kinds of great, um, you know, slow motion stunt work and people crashing through things. And it was actually, you know, a little bit smarter than maybe you would think it is. Uh, but it was really fun to go through that and pick out all the different Greek references. Uh, you know, of course, to the Anabasis, but also to other um, parts of Greek culture and history. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was a great side quest for us. Um, side quest being uh, one of the other challenges, really, that you can do for a Storathon 2023. Other ways to experience um, history and uh, enjoy it. You know, it can be everything from recipes to... Um, <clears throat> visiting sites to watching movies and all of that. And we have a, a, a Voxer group and a Discord group and that stuff, again, will all be, I'll list that information down below if people want to join. But um, yeah, just the kind of fun things that you can do uh, together to celebrate history and have a good time. Um, so yeah, I would actually highly recommend the Landmark Xenophon's Anabasis. Uh, next week, we'll be going on to um, the Hellenica. And I don't expect to be as riveted by that one, but I'm sure I'll still have some fun with it regardless. So if you've read this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you remember the movie The Warriors, um, <laughs> it'd be great to hear your thoughts on that one too. But as always, thank you, BookTube.